So right from the get-go, I want to show you again, for those of you in the program, you're going to love me for this. When it comes to equations, inequalities, and systems of equations, I've split those three things up into separate units, allowing you to really hyper-focus on that specific concept instead of trying to like, oh yeah, here's the overall topic. Let me try to fish for it and find it. Nope, you don't need to struggle for it. You can just go ahead and in the um, math knowledge course, you'll go straight to unit four. So this is math knowledge unit four. And the name of the topic is inequalities, solving inequalities. Okay, solving inequalities. For those of you that are in the program and are curious more about this, um, definitely you want to check this out. So let me just go and show you with my screen in the background. Do, 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 do. Cool. So for inequalities, all you have to do is again on your math knowledge dashboard, um, you're going to go ahead and see that unit four solving inequalities right there. Scroll down to unit four, click that and click the get started on learning button. And you'll see on the left side, all the way on the left, you'll see everything that's available to you. So you can see right over here, the first thing you'll see is a guide to practice on how to do problems exactly like we're doing right now. And these worksheets, or what this is, is pretty much a worksheet that I go through with you hand by hand. And then you have the option of going through a worksheet on your own that you can print or download. And you can try all these problems out all on your own. All the answers are gonna be located at the end. So you'll see the questions with the answers shown to you. Then on top of that, you can try speed drills for each level of difficulty. What we're doing right now, that's one step inequalities. Later on, you'll see that there's two step inequalities, three step, multi-step, and all of that is taught over here on the left. You'll see everything's lined up for you. So this is the great thing about the program if you're in it, because again, you can practice your speed and pressure from the basics of the basics all the way through until the checkpoint right over here that's gonna basically give you all of it at once to see how far you've come. So again, just to make sure that you understand what a speed drill is, is it a hyper-focused practice test so you can get better on what you know you need to work on specifically. You have 10 minutes for this one for 10 questions. And so if I click ready to start, once I do that, it's gonna show me the questions right behind me. And so you'll go through, you'll answer the questions, through and through. I'll just go ahead and skip all the way to the end. And so I've answered all the questions. You click submit. And the great thing about this is okay. Whether you got it correct or incorrect, boom, it'll show you what the right answer is. And anything that you're struggling with, specifically for math knowledge, go back to the guided practice, go back to the worksheets. And on top of that, you can text me. You have no idea how many students text me on a daily basis, over 200. And the majority of them are students in the program that just want help that want to know how to get a certain problem done. So remember that if you're in the program and you're doing these questions and you're stuck, text me. Even if the lessons don't work or didn't work for you, the worksheet didn't work for you, uh, the guided practice didn't work for you, any of the YouTube videos, I'm your last line to help you out. So trust me and reach out to me whenever you have any questions and you'll be able to basically go through this like a boss and get all of these questions right um, at your leisure. So. With these questions here, as you get down the line, you'll have video solutions for each and every single question. So you can really check your work and understand what's going on. So with that, my party people, for those of you that are in the program, does that make sense? Good, 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 good. Again, like I said, for those of you in the program um, or not in the program and you're interested in it, I'm just gonna go ahead and drop the link in the chat box in a few seconds here, just in case you have to leave early. But there's the link again in the chat box. Again, it's over 600 students are in there right now. And I've helped over 1,500 students get the scores they've wanted over the past four years. So it's been a lot of fun. But let's keep the fun going. So how to solve this? Negative 2 is less than x over 13. Well, here's what we're doing, everybody. Inequalities are pretty much the same as equations with one minor difference. Everyone. When it comes to equations, what is the one thing that you will always see in an equation? What's the one thing you always see?
Well, that's part of the process, Landa, right? Part of the process is you're working backwards. But one thing that you always see, oh, Dionysia, yes. Let me know if that's the way you pronounce your name. Dionysia says equal sign. Yes, you have an equal sign in every single problem for an equation. For an inequality or in equation, backwards, negative, it is not equal. So the way that you read this is, hey, negative two is less than x over 13. But the thing is, you solve these inequalities in the same way you would solve equations with one exception to the rule. The only exception is whenever you multiply or divide by a negative, you have to flip the symbol. You flip that. Anytime you multiply both sides or divide both sides by a negative, again, you will flip the symbol. So give me two seconds, my party people. My mom is calling me. Sorry about that. Let me go ahead and drop that right there. So here we go. Everyone, we have X here and X is being divided by 13. How do we get the X by itself? Oh, don't worry, I'm gonna text you in a second. <laughs> so yeah, exactly, we're gonna treat this just like an equation and we're gonna work backwards. So we have X divided by 13. So to get rid of the division of 13, we're gonna multiply both sides by 13. So that's what I'll do here. Times 13, times 13, right there. Once we do that, great. We're gonna go ahead and cancel that out on the right side. Awesome. And so now we're gonna have X on the right side still with that less than sign. Or wait, should I flip it? What did I say earlier? Should I flip that less than to greater than? Should I flip it? Should I flip it? Okay, I see a lot of people saying, yeah, flip it. Some people saying no. What was the rule that I said? When you do what to both sides, you flip it? When you do what to both sides, you flip it? What was it that I said? When you multiply or divide by what? Yeah, Thiele, that's exactly correct. There's no negative. I told you, when you multiply or divide both sides by a negative, you flip the symbol. When I did this here, I multiplied both sides by 13. Is that 13 negative? Nope, not negative, so don't flip it. Not negative, so don't flip it. So with that said, 13 times negative two, that'll end up being negative 26. No hassle there, we're good. But there's one little itty bitty problem. And that's going to be the answers. Remember, my math party people, acing the ASVAB is not just about watching me do it. It's better that you practice as well. It's about watching, practicing, and mastering the material. And the best way to do that is to start off with my free practice test because it comes with video solutions so you can try it out yourself, see all the mistakes that you've made, and then keep raising your score with those video solutions, organizing yourself so you can lower that test anxiety and raise your score. No excuses, it's completely free. So go ahead and click the link there or in the description. That way you can get started, raise your score, and do everything you need to do. Let's ace the ASVAB, but let's get back to the problem after you're done signing up. Because when you look at the answers, uh, it looks like the X is on the left, not the right. That's gonna be a little bit of an issue that we can solve very, very quickly. If I wanna flip sides here and get X on this side and put the negative 26 on the right side, what do I have to do to the symbol? Thank you, Landa. <clears throat> yep, we have got to flip the symbol. Yep. So this right here, that less than turns into greater than when we flip it. If we were to flip, we have to do that. So if we go here to here, there, there, you've got to flip the symbol. And here's why it's true. 
let me give you a very easy example to see. My party people, is it true that five is greater than four? Is that true? Right. Now, if I were to flip the five and the four, if I didn't flip the symbol, is four greater than five? No, it's not. So that's why, again, if you flip the sides, you flip the inequality. And so four is less <clears throat> than five. With an equation, it doesn't matter because this side is equal to this side. So it doesn't matter at all. But when it comes to inequalities, absolutely matters. You have to flip it because you're flipping the placement of the bigger and smaller number. Does that make sense, everybody? Because you flip the position of the bigger and smaller, you have to flip the symbol to basically keep it true. Cool. So now that we've done that, our answer is X is greater than negative 26, which is answer choice D. That is the correct answer. And before you go, if you like what you saw and you want to raise your score with thousands of practice problems just like that, so you can lower that test anxiety, raise that confidence, go to this link right here to check out the full program. There's a video that shows you exactly how it works, but you're gonna get lessons, guided practice, worksheets, speed drills, and everything that you need to feel supported from day one all the way until you pass. Again, I'm Coach Anderson, and I'll see you soon.